they're easy to eat. <laughs> but uh, <coughs> one thing I'll tell you about when I was out of Blythe, California, the, uh, like I said, we're way out in the, out in the desert, really, no town, nothing there. And my brother was in the army. He drove one of those landing boats, the, the oh, wow. small landing boats. And he was up around Seattle somewhere getting ready to ship out. And he had my address. And he said, it was all right for him to come there. And I said, if you've got enough time, yeah. So he shows up in blame on the finger. <laughs> so oh, okay. he could travel in those days. Wow. And, uh, uh, he showed up at the base while he was a sergeant. Oh, yeah. And I was a first lieutenant then. So he said, what are you going to do? I said, I'm, a, I'm going to give you a commission right now. So I gave him a bar for his hat and uh, a jacket to cover his rank. Oh. We ate the officers club for supper. Uh. Walked in, sat out, there's no problem. But he had to spend the night, so uh, I found a vacant bed in one of the guys' rooms, put him up there for the night. And of course, the crew knew all about him being there. And they said, uh, Suppose you want to go on that flight with us tomorrow? We had a practice flight coming up. And, uh, uh, <laughs> I said, yeah, I think he would. So they scrounged a, a, light, a parachute. A parachute? Smuggled him out of the, smuggled him out of the airplane. Wow. And he went flying with us that day. Cool. And when we got back down again, I had a late train in. <laughs> the late trainer operator put the brother in, in a spare machine there. <laughs> so, and he was sweating all the time because he. Impersonating an officer is oh, wow. a bad situation. <laughs> but we got away with it. And, uh, after that, uh, I was kept in the instrument flying school. Learned how to fly instruments and teach other people to do it. That, uh, the Japs finally surrendered in World War II. So did I, and I went home. End of story. That's it. <laughs> I flew. How I said I flew thirty-one missions. All right. Tell us about where, like uh, the the plane that you guys flew. How big was it? How many bombs could it carry? And like how big? Well, we carried. Normally we carry six thousand pounds, twelve five hundred pounders. Just yeah, that's six thousand pounds. And uh, a couple of occasions. Uh, let's put four 2,000 pounders in there. Wow. They are worse. They don't play with like this. Hell of a thing to try to fly like that. Yeah. And, uh, uh, like on the missions, would, that, would you usually drop them all in one place? What? Did you usually drop all of the bombs in oh, one no. place? No, no. No, I went to Hamburg twice. And, Close to Berlin twice, and all kind of uh, low-ball sites they call them, where they're shooting up rockets to London and all those, mm -hmm. all those kind of places. And sometimes a sucker you out there said, "You this way with the main officer this way to get the Germans up over here." To, Shoot at us and let this guy go. Wow. <laughs> we didn't like that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. How high up in the air were you when you're on the mission? How high did you fly for the missions? Did you have to get down? To what? Were you up high? Oh, but we bombed, yeah, I bombed at 20,000 feet. As a rule. Uh, <clears throat> what is that? Like when I, got, when I get on a plane and go up north, how high up do they usually fly? Oh, they go 40,000 feet. 
Okay, so they're... Mm-hmm. Yeah, so they have the power, the design and all the rest of it. And I don't, I don't think we should overload these airliners. Mm. It has such power. Oh. And, uh, I, I can't tell you how, how a person feels when you're sitting up there and getting shot at. With cannons. Wow, with cannons. <laughs> yeah. Is that what they're... 88 flat guns. And... Uh, there was, we, we had holes, I think. I thought we counted a hundred holes in one, one flight. A hundred holes? Yeah. Wow. Uh, <clears throat> I wouldn't take but one of them in the wrong Red place spot. and it's yeah. over. Yeah. yeah. Well, I put it this way. Uh, flag of formation, <clears throat> the way we flew, it was tight. I mean, this is me and this is the guy I fly about. I'm right here. I touched me this rock horse. And if he wiggled, I knew it. If he sneezed, I knew it. Hmm. <laughs> the other end, he was that close. I. Uh, waist gun stick his head out like that and I'd come and tell him whether he shaved or not. Wow. Flying that close. Wow. And uh, <laughs> me and my short feet I had trouble getting everything was supposed to be in the air that day to, to get off the ground. Hmm. And uh, <coughs> we took off my airplane out of hand problems with uh, that engine right there, number three engine. It, uh, a supercharger with the whole power. So you got four throttles, you, you got four superchargers, you got four cutoff valves. And <clears throat> this number three engine started doing this. Just the whole whole clip was coming around 19,000 feet, still in formation, climbing, heading for landing over in the, not, not for us to land, but where the invasion was going on. Okay. And uh, I fed it number, number three, which puts it out of commission, it stops the engine. The bane's flattened up to reduce the drag. And then I, I couldn't stay in formation and oh, climb wow. at that altitude. So I started to peel off and the number two engine, number four engine went up the same damn way. Mm. And then I started to both up and they were just shaking so bad like that. I thought they were going to come off the wing, break wow. off the wing. And, uh, but yeah, I'm going this way and all of a sudden I'm going back this way. <laughs> Headed for home. Oh, really? And uh, I didn't have any alternative. I joined this other group, and so they, they let me slip in this tail end, Charlie. But every gun in that group was pointing at me. <laughs> this is not the place to be. <laughs> oh. I think we had a different kind of bomb load. And. Uh, as soon as we dumped the bombs, I took off. I left. I just rather be able to myself out there. Mm-hmm. Uh, flying right by some of the words, horribly bad. Wow. And uh, our group was horribly good if I do say so. There was one, two, three, four, and there's four turrets. Ball turret underneath the bottom. Yeah, this is a turret, that's a turret back here, and one right here, Okay. and the ball turret underneath. And then there's two waist cutters, one for each side. That okay. shows them, but it's not the right spot, I'll up, be up here on this side. Okay. Oh, they're shooting the German fighters. Okay. Yeah. We were never attacked because of we had such a tight formation, mm-hmm. the Germans, the fighters would leave us alone. They, yeah. they didn't bother us. Except 
after I left, long after I left, uh, a group was on a mission, I think, some place called Mitzburg, I'd never heard of it. And the busted in Germans maximum final effort. They shot down about 10, 10 of my group there, please. Wow. And uh, that was the end of it for that group. <laughs> they were in bed. So I'll show you what can happen. Flying along with, with a guy here in the waist cut who was back here somewhere. And uh, I saw a flak shell hit number three engine and set it on fire. Wow. And uh, they was starting to scramble around and get the fire out. And another shell hit right in the bomb bay. The airplane just collapsed. Boom. Like that. Wow. Everybody killed. Mm. And uh, another time of flying along and you were staggered. Each the group had three or four squadrons flying in one day. Same position. And as a, you're in your own squadron group, and you'd be flying on the guy's rear end or wingtip or whatever, but he's going to be in another group of three up here. You're down here, he's up here. I saw this, this guy up here get hit. We had plaques, clear plastic, canopy. Okay. I saw him get hit, and he started rolling over this way. I said, God, he's going to, going to crash right into us. And he just missed us. Wow. On the way down. <laughs> wow. You don't want to get the fix like that. No, I guess not. <coughs> well, that's all the goodies I can think of. Wow. It's been a pleasure. I hope that you remember that World War II was a bad thing, war is a bad thing. We don't want to do it anymore, <laughs> especially if you're a young fellow. Well, Art, thank you for uh, sharing it with well, us. It's a pleasure. To, that's something like this I've been trying to do for my grandsons. I've got 